Hello, I am Professor Sims, and in this video, I will discuss selective and differential media. This is the sixth in the series of 10 lab sessions held as part of my Laboratory for Fundamentals of Microbiology course. If you are a student currently enrolled in this course, please consult the syllabus and course Moodle site for assignments, quizzes, due dates, and other course information. The learning objectives for this unit include learning the properties of and the uses for uh, several different types of selective and differential media. You're going to observe the appearance of bacteria and yeast grown on these different types of media, including your uh, regular general growth media, nutrient agar, potato dextrose agar, also known as PDA, sabron dextrose agar, also known as SDA, phenyl ethyl alcohol agar, also known as PEA, Maganki auger and MSA, which is mannitol salt auger. You're also going to learn how to interpret the characteristics of bacteria and yeast based on how they grow or how they look on these different media. And of course, as always, you need to understand the safety and disposal procedures related to these experiments. As we've discussed before, microorganisms need a constant nutrient supply to survive. So you're already familiar with the physical types of media. So today, though, we're going to begin to discuss different biochemical types of media. It may be helpful to review the, the specific pH, temperature, and oxygen requirements that we discussed before. These can be found in the Lab 2 reading assignment and or the Lab 2 video presentation. So you may want to go back and have a look through those before moving on. Uh, let's talk first about general growth media. This is going to be neither selective or differential. And what that means is basically if something can grow in the lab, like if it even does grow in a lab, because some things don't, it should be able to grow on general growth media. Uh, the ones that we commonly use in our lab is going to be the nutrient agar, triptych soy agar, and triptych soy broth. Enrichment media is really useful when the organism that you're trying to culture is present, but it's in a relatively small number and it's in a mixed culture. So for example, if we want to isolate bacteria that break down crude oil, um, these things are called hydrocarbonoclastic bacteria, what we would do is we would subculture in sequence, right? So you would culture it and then culture it and then culture it, and you would use a medium that supplies the only kind of carbon that it has um, is crude oil. So in that way, you're using an enriched media in order to try to get that small amount of hydrocarbonoclastic bacteria to, to grow and propagate. And then you're kind of weeding out the other bacteria in that culture. That's enriched media. If you go to the next step, the next step is media that inhibit, they can, like they almost entirely inhibit the growth of unwanted microbes. Not entirely, but for the most part. And they support the growth of the organism of interest by supplying nutrients and reducing competition. So these are selective media. The selective agents that are included in these kinds of media are usually a high salt concentration, high or low pH, and there, there are some others we'll talk about in the, in the following slides. Um, the next three media we're going to discuss are going to be your PDA, SDA, and PEA. These are all selective media. PDA is selective for yeast, molds, and fungi. It has a low pH, of an acidic pH, and it's lower than most bacterial media. This discourages the growth of bacteria because most bacteria can't really tolerate a very low pH. Yeast and molds are more tolerant of acidic conditions. This kind of media is recommended for plate count methods, for uh, foods, dairy products. They, they're used to test cosmetics, and they're also used for growing clinically significant yeast and molds. SDA, Sabron dextrose agar, it's similar to PDA. SDA has an acidic pH to inhibit bacterial growth. SDA is primarily used for the selective cultivation of yeast mold and certain pathogenic, pathogenic fungi. It's often used to identify microbial contamination in food, cosmetics, and again, uh, for looking for clinical specimens. PEA is a selective media that encourages the growth of gram-positive organisms and inhibits the growth of most gram-negative organisms. It is not a differential medium because it does not distinguish between different organisms. It merely encourages or discourages growth. 
Phenylethyl alcohol is the selective agent that inhibits gram-negative organisms by breaking down their membrane permeability barrier and inhibiting their DNA synthesis. So for this figure here, you've got uh, Proteus vulgaris, Staph aureus, E. coli, and Staph epidermidis. You may be able to tell by looking, but in case you can't, Proteus vulgaris is a gram-negative bacterium. E. coli is a gram-negative bacteria as well, and you can see that he's actually growing on this media, but he's not growing in, in great abundance, right? He's kind of looking like he's struggling, and that's how he should look on PEA. Whereas both of your Staphylococci species, the gram-positive species, are killing it. They look great, right? They're not having any trouble. So those are your three selective media. Let's talk now about differential media. The differential media make it easy to distinguish colonies of different bacteria using a change in color of the co either of the colonies or the color of the medium. So color changes are the result of end products created by interaction of the bacterial enzymes with different substrates in the medium, or in the case of hemolytic reactions, the lysis of red blood, red blood cells in the medium. So we're actually going to talk about hemolysis some more in lab 8. So you'll see that again. Selective and differential media can be combined and play an important role in the identification of bacteria via biochemical math. So let's look at the first one, EMB. EMB is selective for gram-negative bacteria. It, contain, it contains eosine and methylene blue dyes, which are toxic to gram-positive bacteria. EMB is differential for lactose fermentation. The lactose fermenters will stain with the methylene blue or the eosinate dye. They will become either a dark purple or a metallic green color. So this figure up top shows EMB inoculated with two coliforms. So there's coliform one, coliform two, and then a gram negative non-coliform in a gram positive organism. Note the green and purple colors here. So what this means is that these two are fermenting lactose. They're all kind of, they're all growing pretty well, but if you look really close here, the, this gram-positive species does kind of look like it's struggling a little bit. This would be one that's difficult to tell if it has quote-unquote good growth. And this would be a case where you'd have to compare this species growth on this media to how it is growing on a general growth media to determine if maybe it's a gram positive or gram negative. So that's that's a bit tricky and I will talk about that some more in lab. Note that it is again possible for a gram positive to grow on media that selects for gram negative and it is possible we saw on the PEA it is possible for gram negative to grow on something that selects for gram positive. The figure on the bottom here shows reactions of E. coli on the left. I keep losing my mouse. E. coli here on the left and Pseudomonas aeruginosa on the right. So note that you have color change in E. coli where it's turning green here. So that means that E. coli is fermenting lactose, whereas the Pseudomonas on the right is not fermenting lactose. It's good to note here that even though you have color change here, that not all of the bacteria has changed color, and it doesn't have to. This still is indicative of a positive result for lactose fermentation. Your next differential media is McGonkey. McGonkey is selective and differential, just like your um, EMB. McGonkey selects for gram-negative bacteria. It contains bile salts and crystal violet, which interfere with the growth of many gram-positive bacteria and favor the growth of gram-negatives, particularly your Enterobacteraceae. So in general, gram-negative organisms will grow well, and most gram-positive organ organisms will not. It is differential for lactose fermentation. Your lactose fermenters will appear pink or sometimes a brick red, Non-lactose fermenters will appear off-white or color colorless due to the addition of the indicator, which is neutral red. So in this first figure here, you have four types of Enterobacteraceae, all of which are showing very good growth. Uh, these two organisms here, the one on the top and the one on the right, are fermenting lactose. And then the one on the bottom and the one on the left here are not fermenting lactose. And you can tell by the color. The bottom figure shows reactions of lactose fermenting E. coli and non-fermenting Pseudomonas originosa. 
Next, you have MSA. MSA is selective for gram-positive COXI, and it also has to be gram-positive COXI that are halo-tolerant because, as it says in the name, mannitol salt agar, MSA contains a high salt content, which inhibits the growth of anything that is not halo-tolerant. These are generally used to identify usually staphylococci, but some microcoxy. Uh, MSA is differential for mannitol fermentation. Fermentation of the carbohydrate mannitol decreases the pH, and it makes the media change from a reddish color or a bright pink color to a yellow color. Among the Staphylococcus species, only Staphylococcus aureus, which is shown down here, is going to be able to ferment mannitol. And then this guy up here on the top is Staphylococcus epidermidis, and he does not ferment mannitol. So for the lab six procedure, we're going to work in larger groups because there are a lot of different types of media and a lot of different specimens. We're going to inoculate nutrient agar, potato dextrose agar, uh, sabarone dextrose agar, phenyl ether agar, uh, eosine methylene blue agar, maganki agar, and mannitol salt agar with all six of these species shown. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it. I've got, I've got it down pot to where it's really efficient and everything's going to be fine. And then all of those plates are going to be incubated and when we come back we're going to observe the appearance of all the bacteria and yeast grown on these plates and we're going to these are all all six of the species and some of their characteristics and what we're going to do is I'm gonna skip ahead just a little bit we're going to determine if they have good growth and if they had a color change and then based on the answers to those two questions we're going to describe the micro if you have good growth sometimes it is difficult uh, to tell if you can't tell if your growth is good then you would compare it to how it looks on nutrient agar because that's a general growth medium. If you have good growth, then it probably means that it is the type of specimen that that media selects for. So for example, if you have good growth on mannitol salt agar, then that probably means that you have a gram positive cocci. That's halo tolerant. Okay, so that's just an example. The second bit about color change that's only going to apply to your differential media, and you can only look at color change if you already have growth. If nothing's growing, then you can't determine if there's a color change because it's not there, right? But if it is growing well, then you can see if there was a color change. If there is a color change, then it, that means that it ferments the sugar in that media. So that's how you would describe the microbes for step three. So if you have good growth on MSA, and the media has changed from bright pink to yellow, then you could say that this microbe is most likely a gram-positive coxy that is halo-tolerant and ferments mannitol. So that is what you're going to have to do for your lab report for all of these species on all of these uh, media. So in order to get a little bit of a head start on that process, you have some expected results that I've already kind of mapped out here for you. So I've already described on this page, first of all, who's a yeast, who's a bacteria. So that's going to make a difference as to who, what kind of media it should grow better on. I've also given you the gram negative, gram positive determination for all the bacterial species, well, for all the species. And it's going to be up to you to determine if, or well, which of those species ferments any of the sugars that we're looking at. So does E. coli uh, ferment mannitol? Does Staphylococcus aureus Ferment lactose, ferment lactose. So those are the things that you're going to have to go and research on your own. I've given you guys this to kind of help you to keep track of all these media and what they do. So this is a table that you can fill out. It will help you to kind of keep all of this stuff straight while you're working on not only lab six, but when you start to work on your unknown project. Uh, I will put up a video talking about the unknown, and obviously we'll discuss that in class. We're actually going to start the unknown project during lab six. But this can help you to kind of put everything in one place. Which media is selective? What do they select for? What is in the media that makes them selective? Which media are differential? What do they differentiate for? And what is the thing in the media that makes them differential?
So if you get an idea to go ahead and have that filled out, your PowerPoint slides, textbook, the lab manual to do that. And if you do that before you come to lab six, it's going to help you tremendously. So I highly recommend doing that. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to do the reading. Check the description for more videos related to these topics and leave your questions for me in the comments below.